Hello guys, welcome back to Eastern Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for daily civil engineering videos. Today our lecture is about the reinforcement requirement in beam, column, slab and footing. In this lecture we are going to discuss that what should be the minimum reinforcement requirement and what should be the maximum reinforcement requirement for different structure members such as the beam, column, slab and footing. And our reinforcement provided in this structure member should be in between the minimum and maximum reinforcement. So we are going to start with the beam. The first one is the beam structure member that what should be the minimum and maximum reinforcement requirement for the beam. And this minimum and maximum reinforcement requirement are according to the Indian standard 456 according to the code of Indian. So with the beam starting with the beam the minimum reinforcement should be should be equal to the 0.2 percent of the cross section of the beam if we are using the fe 415 it means if we are using the steel bar of 415 megapascal strength yield strength of 415 megapascal then we can use 0.2 percent area of the reinforcement of that of the cross section area of the beam it means if let's consider this is any beam cross section area I want to explain this 0.2% area. So let's consider this is in a beam cross section area. This is 200 mm millimeter and this is the width is also 200 millimeter which is the square cross section of the beam. So our reinforcement, our minimum reinforcement requirement for such beam should be equal to 0.2% of the this cross section area. So it means, so if you want to find out the area of the reinforcement requirement, the minimum reinforcement requirement for such beam, so it will be 0.2 percent, so it will be divided by 100, multiplying with the area of the cross section, because this area is in percentage of that of the cross section area of the beam, so 0.2 percent of the beam area, beam area is 200 cross 200, so after multiplying, we get value of 80 square millimeter. So it means that the minimum reinforcement of 80 square millimeter should be provided in this beam in order to have a ductile behavior. So this is the minimum reinforcement for the beam. If we are using the FE415 grade steel, it means that the strength of the yield strength of the steel bar is 415 megapascal. 415 megapascal now if we are using the other grade of steel so this requirement comes out to be 0.35 percent if we are using the fe 250 which means that this is the low grade steel with the yield strength of 250 megapascal then our minimum beam reinforcement requirement is 35 percent it is now higher than the 0.2 percent because the strength of the bar is lower here and what should be the maximum reinforcement requirement for the beam? And the maximum reinforcement requirement for the beam is 4% of that of the beam cross section area. So similarly, if this if we take this beam as an example, so the maximum reinforcement will be 4 divided by 100 multiplied with the area 200 cross 200. So it comes out to be 1600 square millimeter it means that the maximum area of reinforcement we should provide is is 1600 we should not provide more than this area of the steel bar so the maximum reinforcement requirement for the beam is four percent and the minimum reinforcement requirement depends on the grade of the steel bar if it is 415 fe it will be 0.2 percent of the area of the beam if it is fe 250 so it is 0.3 for 0.35 percent of the area of the beam. Now, what should be the reinforcement requirement for the column? For the column, this requirement is for the longitudinal bars. We are not using any stirrups or any little ties. For the longitudinal bars, the minimum reinforcement requirement is 0.8 percent. We should provide at least area of 0.8% of the cross section area of the column while the maximum reinforcement requirement is 6% with 
without lapping of the steel bar. If you don't overlap our steel bar in the column, then the minimum re maximum reinforcement is 6%. If we overlap, then the maximum reinforcement is 4%. So these are the two conditions for the column. The minimum is 0.8% and the maximum is 6 or 4% depending on the lapping of the steel bars and without lapping of the steel bars. Now the third one is the slab. For slab, the minimum reinforcement is 0.15%. 0.15% of the area of the slab. If we are using the FE 250 grade steel and 0.12% if we are using the FE 450 grade of steel. So we have two criteria here. If we are using 250, then we should provide the minimum reinforcement of 0.15%. If we are using the 450, then the minimum reinforcement should be 0.12%. And the maximum reinforcement for the slab is 4% of that of the area of the slab. The fourth one is the footing. For the footing, the minimum reinforcement should be in should be 0.12 percent if we are using the FE 415 grade of steel and 0.15 percent of area of the footing if we are using the FE 250 grade of steel and for maximum enforcement they don't have such a fixed range like we have for the beam column and slab but this range varies that's why we have some unknown value here but these are the minimum and maximum reinforcement ranges for the beam column slab and footing and also the minimum reinforcement ranges mostly depends on the grade of steel for example if you are using here the 415 grade then you have different minimum reinforcement for the beam if you are using the lower grade of steel then you have the high requirement for the minimum reinforcement Similarly with the column it is 0.8%, there is no need of to check the grade of steel, while for the slab we are give you again to check the grade of steel, while for the footing we also have to check the grade of steel, that which grade of steel we are using, accordingly we have to provide the minimum reinforcement. Hope you guys understand and don't forget to subscribe my channel for daily civil engineering videos. Thank you for watching my video.